Well, they were going to do it, and uh, I was still living in New York, and I get, this is rather strange. Two different agents in the same agency in California called me like two hours apart saying that I've got an offer to do Marty, and the other one says, you got an offer to do Barnaby, which was a TV version of the cartoon strip Barnaby. So I'm now placed in the, and apparently both agents accepted on my behalf without saying anything to me. And I'm in this terrible, terrible predicament about, my God, what a, so my agent, the head of the agency was in New York and he says, what do you want to do? And I said, well, if I'm gonna lose one and gain one, I, uh, I would much rather go with Marty because it's a much more prestigious material and if it works, uh, you know. So the people involved with Barnaby uh, at the William Morris office were gonna sue me. So I get to California and uh, fortunately, <laughs> sometimes nepotism is a great weapon. An uncle of mine was a very close friend with the head of uh, William Morris. And William Morris told him, he says, leave the kid alone. Let him do what he wants to do. And I did. I did the, the pilot of uh, Marty. Unfortunately, it, it didn't sell. A friend of mine, actually, he's my, <laughs> he's my uh, daughter's father-in-law. He wrote the original script, which was a wonderful script, but the, the, the network didn't like it because it didn't have enough characters in it. And so they asked for another script, and they wrote this terrible thing about a relative of Marty's uh, chickening out on getting married. But that character ended up having the part, and you don't do that in a, in a pilot, you know. But it was my first pilot, and I didn't have any control or, uh, over it, and so it went by way of all flesh. Did Barnaby happen? Barnaby happened many years later, oddly enough, with, with an actor who was my understudy in Fiorello on Broadway, Sorrel Book. Uh, but it never, I don't think it ever really got on the air. If it did, it didn't last very long.